So let's talk about it. Because income, you know, inferior goods are going to turn out to be pain in the butt in some ways, interesting in other ways. They play some role in economics, probably get talked about more than they should. But anyway, we'll talk about inferior goods. What's an example of an inferior good? What's, a, what, what's an example of a good that's inferior? What? Potato. Potato. <laughs> okay. Walmart brand sweaters. Walmart brand sweaters. Kraft mac and cheese. Obviously, I haven't been to my house. But anyway, that's, a, that's okay. No, I mean, but, but think about it. Let's go through each of these. Okay? So we have two examples of food, which is potatoes and 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 mac craft mac and cheese are they is food inferior no i mean in general people buy more food as income goes up right as their income rises they buy more food what do we mean by more food how would you measure food Guys buying like mac and cheese, steak, potatoes, oranges, you know, all the hamburgers, all kinds of stuff. Okay. So you would you would you would measure food, food consumption equals the sum of PI, XI, I element of food. <laughs> So all the things we're going to call food, we're going to add up their expenditures. And we're going to say D food, the change in food, is the sum of what? The I element of food of PI DX. What's important, and you can see this formula bears a strong resemblance to the formula I put on the board before because it was the sum of PI DXI over all goods. This is just over the food goods. And it says, well, I'm going to wait. I'm not going to measure this thing in calories. I'm not going to measure this thing in pounds. I'm not going to measure it in some units like that, taste. I'm going to measure it by weighting the different goods by the PI. Now, you can fight with me about the PI. And there are issues you could raise that are legit. But the PI's got one nice thing going for it, which is what? Why is this a good measure of food? Yeah, but it's in more than in standard units. Pounds would be in standard units, too. Okay, why does it not make sense? Why does this standard unit make more sense than pounds? Yeah, because they reflect, you know, this is implicitly assigning a weight to each of the goods. It says, when I add these things up, I'm going to count each unit of good I at some rate, and good J at another rate. And the PIs have a strong virtue going for them. There are a hit value that this guy places on each of those goods. I value a pound of steak at three times the price of a pound of hamburger because it sells for three times as much. Which tells me this guy who's buying the steak and a hamburger must value a pound of steak three times as much as he values a pound of hamburger. Right? So the virtue of this kind of an expenditure measure, now remember I'm holding the prices constant. I'm not looking at DPI. That I'm not looking at. I'm saying take the prices and measure the change in consumption at those prices. Value it, because it tells me the trade-offs he's willing to make. That's the big virtue of this, is it reflects not just market values, it reflects his values. And even if the pound of pounds went down, he was getting steak that was worth three times as much as the hamburger, even if total pounds went down, if the value went up, he was getting more food as he sees it, in terms of the value he gets from that food. Okay? 
any questions that people have. Now, the tricky part is, is that goods are often complicated. They don't just give you food. You you'd actually understand very little about food consumption in a rich country if you thought about food simply in terms of like nutrition, right? If you thought about the world as, you know, if a nutritionist looks at the food market, they're just like, oh my God, it doesn't look anything like it should. People aren't valuing these goods based on this, quote, nutritional value that I think they should be looking. It's kind of like our dentist, right, who's out there going, oh my God, these people aren't behaving the way I want them to. They're out there eating all this crap that they shouldn't be eating. But they like that crap. And they like it partly because it gives them what they're looking for in food, but sometimes they're getting it because it's entertaining. Right? If you look, at this, it's a fun place to eat. You were in the restaurant business and you said, oh man, I'm just going to hire a bunch of nutritions to determine how to design my restaurant. You're going out of business tomorrow. Right? You're, you're, just, you're just not going to be around. Okay? Anyway, so this advantage is it represents value. But anyway, so the point is, food consumption is going to be a normal good, but within food consumption, some goods are going to be inferior. You can have inferior goods, but they're almost always a subset of a broader category that's normal. That's the way inferior goods come about. It's not that people want less food as they get richer is that they get their food in a different way. They buy less of certain things. Maybe they buy less mac and cheese. Maybe they buy less potatoes. But they buy other kinds of food to take its place. So we have potatoes and mac and cheese. What was the other example? Walmart. So people buy less clothes? Are clothes inferior good? Definitely not in my household. We spend more on clothes as income goes up. Right? My household, definitely not in that inferior clothes category. But they buy more of other kind of clothes. The other thing that's really important is, when you talk about something being inferior, you really got to think about what income level you're talking about. Believe me, Walmart is counting on Walmart being a normal good in many parts of the world. That is, as income grows, Walmart sweaters will be in more demand. Maybe among middle-class Americans, they might be in less demand as middle-class Americans go up. But as countries, as many people in a richer country in the world get richer, Walmart's counting on the income effect going in their direction. Right? So things are not inferior at all income levels. In fact, it doesn't make any sense. They couldn't be inferior at all income levels. They gotta go up before they can go down. You gotta consume before you can decrease consumption. Right? So they're not gonna be inferior from the lowest income level to the highest. So broad categories of goods, food, clothing, transportation, entertainment, those are gonna be normal. Inferior goods are gonna be goods that are gonna be normal over some income range, but may become inferior at other income ranges. And, you know, if you define goods narrowly enough, they'll almost always have that kind of a pattern where they're normal for a while and they become inferior as people substitute to even higher and higher, typically higher quality goods as income goes.